Welcome to Chapter 3. In the previous session, we discussed what many crime and intelligence analysts are doing on a daily basis in a variety of organizations, but truly what crime and intelligence analysis can provide if optimally used within your department, truly providing context and understanding to the data that you see in a lot of different reports. In this session, I'll provide a roadmap for you to implement crime and intelligence analysis in your department. We'll discuss things such as personnel, those considerations associated to your personnel, training, and any needed investments in technology. To start out, it's extremely important to consider the different types of personnel in which you want to have within your crime and analysis capabilities. Your analyst should have a variety of skill sets, have a variety of educational experience. While individuals with criminal justice degrees will have a balance of theory and practice, you should also seek degrees for which may apply to police work, sociology, urban planning, geography, psychology for understanding criminal behavior and or potentially even information technology degrees. Analysts should have a variety of law enforcement experience as well. You should not have analysts who are just new to the law enforcement environment or culture, nor should you have analysts who have all a high level of law enforcement experience. A balance in education and experience builds a team in which analysts bring a variety of different perspectives to make sense of the myriad of data in which they use. In many different organizations, people constantly ask, what if I decided to repurpose personnel from another area into crime and intelligence analysis? If you wish to do that, you should also augment this with individuals from outside your organization, people who have completely different perspectives, who may not have the same institutional knowledge that someone within the organization from another area may have as well. You definitely should be seeking a balanced approach and a team which has a diversity in their skill sets in terms of education and experience. Analysts must be naturally curious. Being curious allows them to have an analytical ability in which they should constantly be asking questions of themselves, of the data in which they're analyzing, and in which the different organization does the policies, the procedures, the way the organization actually functions. They should always be asking these questions and most importantly, able to anticipate the next question from you or your personnel. That anticipation allows them to truly analyze to multiple depths and to be more engaged in the process. Analysts should also be what we consider a tweener in between IT, information technology, and a level of law enforcement knowledge. They should have an above average information technology background. They need to be able to implement and manipulate a variety of data, more than just Excel charts and databases and pretty pictures. Analysts must also understand the law enforcement business processes. In order to understand how to help you understand your response to a particular problem, your response to resistance, response times, as I showed in the previous session. They need to know what data exists and also what is possible based on the process, the general order, the operational order that contains the information. If, for example, when an analyst is working on something associated to response times, and you've recently changed your policy to have missing persons calls be priority one or two from a priority three or four, that policy change, the operational order change, the written directive general order change, impacts those response times. Analysts need to be able to manipulate the data to show the increase in response times and to have the law enforcement knowledge or the ability to go and look at the business processes the policies and procedures that show that that particular call has recently changed. And that may be the result of the response time increases shown with the data. Data 
and IT issues can often be complicated. Analysts must be able to, resist, to convey the results of the work that they do with exceptional communication skills. They must share this information with a variety of people in your organization, people who have little information and technology understanding and lots of law enforcement experience and those that might have a lot of information technology background and little law enforcement knowledge. Their communication must be both written and verbal. They should be as comfortable doing a briefing verbally as sending the information in an email in a written form. And those exceptional communication skills pay dividends in how the information is conveyed and ultimately how your personnel respond to the information. Having the right people is only half of the equation in the development of crime and intelligence analysts. You must invest in the development of your personnel. As it relates to training, you are going to have to invest in training them. And one of the first investments is internal training. Getting them to understand your policies, your procedures, your business processes, knowing where to go to get your written directives, your general orders, your operational orders, or your unit procedures. Making sure that they are getting training from individual officers, as well as unit commanders, as well as individuals at the highest level of your organization. They have to be trained on how the organization operates, flows, and truly functions. And it's your personnel that have to provide that. I highly consider that analysts be involved in ride-alongs, going out and working with detectives one-on-one, -on -one, seeing and actually going through ride-alongs with patrol officers or deputies, making sure that they understand how things actually function within your organization. The variety of the training that analysts need probably will not actually be within your department, and the majority of it will not actually be in your region. You will have to have external training. External training has to focus on initial skills that analysts can come back right away and use. If they go to a training for something like cell phone mapping or social media, while those are important skills in doing analysis, they're not going to get you off of the ground doing crime and intelligence analysis. Analysts need things such as Excel, Access, SQL, training associated to their actual analytical skill and increasing their understanding of how to analyze a situation. You have to ensure that you basically do initial skills training and you have to look for external training in web-based types of training and environments, as well as looking at conferences where other analysts can share their institutional knowledge and the work that they've done over time as well. You have to ensure that you develop a comprehensive training plan and continually invest not only today, but in the future this, in that training plan as well. The plan should be in line with your department objectives. It should be for progressing crime and intelligence analysis in your organization. Crime and intelligence analysis is something that you're never going to have arrived to. It is constantly changing, and you must invest as it changes over time as well. You should be committed to adhering to that training plan and making sure that it serves as a guide for your analytical capabilities, recurring funding investments, and provide a roadmap for your analysts. More importantly, you can share with them what their initial skill training will look like, as well as what you want to do and provide for them into the future as well. You must invest in technology in order to do crime and intelligence analysis. One of the keys to doing so is to truly establish a fundamental technology for analysis. For many people, this includes the ability to do advanced crime mapping using geographic information systems or GIS mapping and database technology based on a volume of the information which analysts have to comb through, mine, compile, and then analyze. Keep in mind that you don't want to select database technology on today's requirements, but projected requirements. Where do you want to go a year, two, and three from now? Ideally, you want to seek technology that does both of these, or more importantly, is extremely compatible with one another. And most importantly to analysts is you have to acquire data. You have to get a variety of data in order to be able to figure out what is actually going on. And more importantly, you have to develop processes that easily integrate that data together. 
So you integrate data from your CAD system, your arrest system, potentially by event, by person. You have to develop integration of data over time. This allows you to answer a myriad of questions without antiquated processes of getting the data, figuring it out, answering the question, only to have you come back and ask another question that requires the entire process all over again. It's not only frustrating for the analysts, but it's also time consuming and allows them to be away from other things that they should be working on. It also delays the process of resource allocation for you. It means that you can address that problem immediately. So it's extremely important to integrate those data and the data processes together. To start out, I wanna show you a little bit about some of the different data types that are available as well. So there are police data, something that you're most commonly using every single day, calls for service with comments, incident reports, arrest and booking reports, field investigative or interview reports, also known as FIs or FIRs, traffic crashes and citations. The data that most of us know is data that we use every day and data that our officers and deputies are actually working to put into our records management systems. There is also other law, other law enforcement data that may be relevant, things that are slightly outside the scope of your organization. Again, sex offenders and predators, probation and parole data, people who are released from jail or prison facilities, the incidents that are occurring within the jail, maybe the, the fights or the different assaults that are occurring between inmates, releasees from the Department of Corrections, people who've served prison terms and are now coming back to your jurisdiction potentially, jail phone calls, jail visitation logs to show who is visiting individuals who are incarcerated, and then potentially state and federal agency interviews and the context of that inter those interviews. Outside of law enforcement data, there's other data which is extremely relevant and can be correlated with law enforcement data. Things such as driver's license information, registered vehicles, data regarding the schools and individuals in the school system, census data, property owners, businesses, apartment data, and then employment data, where people are employed or a list of individuals who work for a particular establishment. And finally, there's geographic data. As I just mentioned with technology, GIS, information systems are extremely important and geographic data has to be correlated with the variety of other data that we have as well. So those include things like streets and schools, waterway locations, gas stations or convenience stores, your law enforcement boundaries, such as your zones, your precincts, or your areas and then potentially waste management facilities where you have dumpsters, where you have landfills, other places that may be relevant to where crime could occur or might be occurring in the future. The variety of data is extremely important and data is the foundation in which analysts work. So it's extremely important to ensure that the data that you have is good quality and you're constantly acquiring more data as well. Once technology is established, your next goals include, should include automation of routine information, creation of daily maps and reports that simply display information from your records management systems should be automated. There are processes in place that allow analysts time to analyze and provide actionable intelligence. The automation of routine information will give your analysts more time. In the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, we've automated over the, over the creation of over 400 reports that were done at one point daily and simply displayed lists of crime by specific police areas, initiative areas, and time periods. All of this was condensed using Microsoft reporting services to a few general reports with the user selecting his or her area of interest from a list of possible areas. The automation of routine information is extremely important. You then must develop a mechanism for analysis product dissemination. How do you get the information to the people who need it the most? Developing a mechanism, a mechanism for analysts and personnel to collaborate on that information, to talk about it, to add their own value to the information, and to develop a teamwork and a process. And then to proactively provide information to citizens. Public requests will always continue, but if you're proactively providing information to citizens, you're allowing your analysts the time to true, do true analysis, not reporting. 
in Jacksonville, one of the examples we've used is this is a simple website in which we disseminate our information. The first page of this shows you the news articles that are going on, a residential burglary pattern occurring in a particular apartment complex. You may also consider a system like this one, which is a secondary system we've developed known as Wicked 94, which allows people to comment on the information and to collaborate together. You can see this is our Zone 3 area showing all of our crime alerts. What are the patterns, series, and trends that we're dealing with? When you click on each one of those, you'll be able to comment, as I did here at the bottom, with the suspect who was arrested in this particular area. So again, a way to collaborate the information using technology that doesn't require phone calls or emails, but true collaboration. This technology has actually been developed and used from a vendor known as Social Text. And there is also a case study about the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and the use of this collaborative technology, a social platform for collaborating information among officers, deputies, and our analysts as well. And then finally, citizen online crime mapping, making sure that you are getting information quickly to citizens. You should also, again, in the investment of technology, consider desktop laptops and servers developing a progressive roadmap for diversifying your capabilities, figuring out what your gaps are, things like structured and unstructured data mining, potential cell phone technology, and again, using social media as a, a measure of data that you can use in analysis as well. Acquire those tools for diversifying your capabilities over time, develop that roadmap for you, and ensure that all of your analytical tools fit in the analyst workflow. That concludes Chapter 3. Welcome to Chapter 4.